Hello YouTube, Blue Matona here, and welcome to episode number 6 of Let's Play Total War Three Kingdoms as Gong Du. Uh, where we left off last time, we finally took the Sand Pass, this really annoying, uh, not even a province really, just, just this pass, uh, you know, fort that guards this entrance into the heartland of my territory, uh, right in, um, right in at me. So, uh, we finally took it. Uh, that's no longer a threat for armies coming this direction up through here. Uh, or if they do, they at least have to get through the pass on the way. And, um, anyway, it's a big relief. So, we have an interesting, you know, situation with the looters in the north. Uh, in that, well, they're there. Uh, and they're looting. <laughs> and I need to stop them. Um, I would really love to, you know, have this Guzang uh, settlement up here be like a legitimate commander. Uh, on the northern border, but I did do some research um, in between episodes here on the looters, because I was not familiar with the mechanic before they appeared last episode, and what I realized and what I learned is that it's actually just, it's not a faction, it's not like, you know, some army, it is a built-in mechanic of the game. Uh, they can either appear on their own, or I think sometimes other factions can pay for them to appear, um, but what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to make it so you can't just border camp the map. Uh, you know, I can't just use this as a, you know, no armies can get through here because this is the edge of the map, so I only have to worry about this front line. Um, and they will come in and loot cities. I don't know if they will, for instance, pass this city and come into the south here and, like, go after Jinchang or other commanderies, or if they just deal with the border provinces. Because if they just deal with the border provinces, this isn't a big deal for me right now. Because right now the city's level zero, so... I don't even have to, I don't have to worry about it. Like, it really, it does not matter to me. It's not giving me any income. If I lose it, I lose it. It's not the end of the world. Um, and these, obviously, are not uh, even built um, provinces yet within the commander. So if they only target these border provinces here, then I'm, I'm good. I, I don't really have to, uh, I don't really have to worry about anything. I can just let them do their thing and just ignore it. But um, if they do move south, then I'm going to have to deal with them. Uh, I'm going to have to basically station an army up there permanently uh, in defense and from what I understood, looking at the research, is there's three areas of the map where they appear. Uh, the first one is here, um, right by Wu Wei. And as you can see, like, there's mountain ranges guarding this whole edge. And there's mountain ranges guarding this whole edge of the map. Um, but right here, there's not. Right in this zone is forest and plains and whatever. It's, it's, it's accessible, uh, is, is the gist of it. Um, so it's basically supposed to simulate the fact that in real life, you know, if outside forces could come in and invade you. Uh, I think the other section is they can come in, yeah, right here, um, through the forests up on this side of the map. So this side, looters can appear, right here. And then, um, also, if you see the mountain range, follows the map all the way down and around. Um, but I'm pretty sure they can appear down here, even though there are mountains, I'm pretty sure they can appear down here. Uh, somewhere in this southern section of the map as well, which obviously, we don't have to worry about the other two, uh, at least not for the time being. So, long story short, we eat... I, I desperately need a second army in this realm down here, this fighting. I mean, these are full-on forces. My one army here, you know, it's it's just it's too much for them to uh, be able to, you know, for them to do on their own. I mean, this is a full force sitting right here. And, you know, while it would take them a few turns, and I could definitely get there... Ooh, sorry about that. Um, well, I can definitely get there to defend. It would take them at least two or three turns to get there. Uh, so I do have enough time. <clears throat> All right. What we need to do this episode is, one, we need to continue. Um, I think we should just go try to knock out Jang Lu. Sorry, I had something in my throat there. Um, we should probably go and try to take out Jang Lu uh, for two reasons. One, obviously, it's the city um, to the province that we have here. So this is a two-province commandery. Uh, so taking out Jang Lu would complete the commandery for us. And uh, second, and much more important, it is a one-province um, nation. Uh, Jang Lu, if you look here, where is he? <clears throat> is just that one province. Jeez, sorry, I had to step away to clear my throat there. I'm not really sure what that was, but long story short, Zhang Lu is just, just one province here, so not only taking out their army, it just means another threat that we don't have to worry about. I mean, this one province country is fielding a full army. Oh, this, you know, faction is fielding a full army, full-size army, uh, and it is a threat in through this direction here into my territory. So what we need to do is we need to knock them out. We need to not have to worry about them anymore. And then we can focus on just fighting, uh, if you look in here, just fighting the uh, the Han Empire um, provinces. 
and uh, Su Yang Ting, um, who's you know obviously just took over for the people we killed last episode. Um, so that's going to be the priority number one. And obviously, this, yeah, this problem, this army doesn't have any movement points. Um, priority number two is we need to improve our economy. It is bad right now, um, especially if I'm going to have to keep a small force stationed in the north to deal with looters. Uh, I'm going to absolutely need to um, have a third army because I'm going to need to have two patrolling the south here. So that's another thing we need to do. Uh, one comment I have about looters, and obviously this game has been out for a long time, and you know they're not going to make changes at this point, but I just feel like it, it, it would be better mechanic if they appeared, but maybe took one or two turns to, you know, like, they start as if they're mustering an army. Like, they need to muster in. Like, you know, showing up on the doorstep and attacking the city with a full stack right off the bat seems a little bit much, but that's just my opinion. Okay, so I, I still need to figure out, what is this reserves thing that is, uh, that is hurting this army? Uh, oh, is it reserves in Jincheng? No. No, reserves here are good. My blade oh, it's reserves in Anding. Anding's reserves are super low. Um, okay, yeah, that's definitely very frustrating. Oh, this was the province that was uh, that was affected by Lu Bu um, and his very annoying uh, ability to do that. So anyway, let's go into here. We've got armies. What? Low military. Yeah, I know. Thank you very much. And what do we have here? Rebellion incoming in Anding. Low public order. Oh. Steel for battle. There's gonna be a rebellion here. Well, this this army will get some uh, get some fighting experience then. That's for sure. Uh, yeah, it looks like public order is gonna. I mean, it's it's just, it's Lu Bu tanked it, and I mean, there's nothing I can do. Reserves are gonna be zero for five turns. That's minus a hundred public order. I mean, that's huge. Uh, there's basically nothing I can do about that. And Wu Wei is uh, dropping public order really quick. I mean, that makes sense. Uh, reserves and local forces. They. I, I need to count that one down. I don't care about that. Um, the rest, though, are looking uh, pretty uh, pretty good for the time being. So, we need to make more money. So, Wudu is obviously upgrading its capital from last video. Jin Chang. Yep, we're up, uh, upping the dock market, so that'll give us more commerce income, which would be huge. And, um... And Ding's upgrading its city. And where's Hangzhong? Hanzhong. Right. We're upgrading this in Hanzhong for more uh, income from Silk. And then, obviously, when we get the uh, main settlements, that'll really help with that a lot, too. So... I think there's not much we can really do this turn. Uh, we have no uh, no candidates for office. Uh, nothing we can do in diplomacy. Reforms, we are currently researching one uh, for the next level of buildings. Yeah, I mean, we probably just need to uh, go ahead and end the turn and, and move on to the next one with movement range in our army, some replenishment done. Definitely need the replenishment in that force. And we'll see where the enemies move. So let's go ahead and jump in. All right, army popping up over here. She didn't move her forces, that's good. And Han Empire, nothing. Looters. Did they just attack Wu Wei again? I mean, there's nothing there. They're not, they can't loot anything. If they just want to keep hitting it every turn, I mean, that's fine. Tao Ying, alright, good. So she needs to deal, the army, this lit woman in myself, she needs to deal with another, uh, with another force, uh, another war, which is great. Uh, rebellion, oh, that's the Anding Rebellion, huh? Okay. Words and promises. Okay, so there is a rebellion in Anding. Um, is this the rebellion? Khan Empire Renegades? It must be. Uh, that is, uh, I mean, that's pretty... Yeah, that's pretty, uh, pretty low. Sieges and blockades. I mean, the settlement was sacked, but there's nothing there to sack, so that's fine. Uh, small city, Anding. Nice and traits gained. Bay, uh, Bao Shao got energetic. Instinct, expertise, and campaign movement range. Where is she? Um... Is she even doing anything right now? No, she does not have any... Uh, she's not on assignment uh, right now whatsoever, uh, I don't think. Where am I able to see that again? It should tell me it's somewhere. I'm not 100% sure. Anyway. Um, we need... Yeah, so we can take this force, and I mean, we can, you know move south and I guess take out the uh, the rebels. I don't think here in Anding, this is the capital. I mean, I think my garrison here of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 units might be enough to actually beat this force. This force is, it does have a general, but the force itself is pretty bad. 
Uh, and the army here is fully replenished in, so that's a force that I we definitely are going to need to worry about. But let's go ahead and let's move from here. I mean, it's going to take many turns to get there, three turns to get there. So let's go ahead and we'll move into the city uh, here on the first turn. And we'll defend this province and uh, let them keep replenishing in. Uh, we need this army to get, to get back up to pretty much full strength, full fighting strength. And is there a stance I can do that helps with that? Not really. Uh, and then this force up here, I mean, we definitely want to move them uh, south towards this rebel force, but I am... See, I don't know if I actually need to go get this salt line. I mean, I would love to get that salt line, but it's it's just kind of, you know, it's in a it's in an area that doesn't have a capital built right now. I think that's the capital city, and there's I don't think anyone owns it. Um, let's move them down the road slightly. I want to get a line of sight on um, on the cap on the city. Can I can I get that already? Come on. Really, still no line of sight. Okay, come on now. Alright, well I have to use pretty much all their movement range, huh? Alright. Um, oh yeah, I can't see what the salt mine garrison is. But there is no army defending it. I might just go knock that really Remain quick. Firm. We can get, we can go to forced march. But that doesn't matter. I'd rather stay within my territory for one more turn. Uh, again, we, will, we want these um, military supplies to keep growing. Uh, they'll grow at 11 per turn. That's a nice rate. And then, you know, we can go take out that salt line. Maybe move south. Maybe I take this army and go take out the rebellion really quickly. We'll see what happens here um, next turn. You know what? Maybe maybe I do do... Maybe that's exactly what I do. Let's get them, you know, in position. Ah, see, I don't want to just... I don't want to over... Cause like, this is in a really annoying spot. Because it's kind of between my four. I do want to move this army south anyway. Um... So yeah, you know what? We'll leave this Marching. army in the settlement for the turn. Okay. Uh, again, we didn't gain much army. Uh, any candidates? No, no candidates for court. Uh, so there's not again. There's not really much we can do this turn. Ending construction available. Rebellion mustering. Low public order. Rebellion's not large. I'm not too worried about the rebellion. Um, public order is actually growing at a really, really uh, quick rate because malcontents leaving for the rebellion. That's pretty nice. And we do have the extra building slot, too. Uh, I mean, if we really wanted to, we could spend one turn building the garrison. Um, <laughs> I'm considering it, because because the garrison, like, then I could, you know, if this rebellion attacks my city with the garrison forces, too, I, I almost definitely win that fight. Um, and then I could always delete it after the rebellion's done and build something a little more worthwhile. Uh, so I say, yeah, let's just go ahead and do that. And what this will do, at least for the time being, is... Is make it so that if this army, when this army attacks me, like uh, I don't need to pull a force in to defend the city. Uh, this the city will be plenty defended. It'll have the five units of swordsmen and two units of archers, and an additional three archers, two spear, and two swords. That will almost definitely be able to take out this force, uh, no doubt about that. And then I can focus on taking the salt line, and I can keep this army focusing on the threats in the south. Um, so that's what we're going to do there. And what else do we have? Amding, low public order, rebellion, mustering. Yes, I am aware. I am well aware. Thank you very much. Um, not much else we can do this turn. Let's see what this army ends up doing up north. If it just keeps sacking the same city over and over again, I'll just leave that be. Uh, I'm not too worried about that. Uh, this army is continuing to replenish, uh, which is Resist great. And, and hardships. let's go ahead. I'm actually thinking here. Hold up a second. We get... This is, a, see, he's a very good infantry commander. I really don't think I need, like, that unit of horseback huntsmen. I mean, those those units are, are fun to, to run with and have mobile archers, but they're small and they're not very useful. Uh, I am, I think I'm going to actually disband. Are you sure you want to delete these troops? Confirm. We're going to disband that unit. China um, and then what we're going to do is we are going to recruit in an additional uh, unit here of infantry. Um... And what do we have? We have guardian, two of these Guardians of the Land, uh, heavy halberd infantry. Those are nice troops. Um, yellow turban spearmen, not uh, you know, not quite quite as good. Way worse stats. Um, yeah, way worse stats. But they do have range block chains, which is nice. Um, and then we actually have three Guardians of the Land and two of those spearmen. Um, maybe take a light sword infantry, yellow turban warriors. You know, they have good range block, they have good health. I mean, again, like, you know, they're not, um, you know, maybe they're not, like, to Guardians of the Land level with their attack. 
Uh, but, you know, and morale, they're definitely worse. What is this? That's melee damage base, that's armor piercing, charge bonus. Yeah, I mean, their damage is definitely lower. Uh, there's no doubt about that. But what they do have is they have better melee evasion, they have better uh, melee evasion base. Um, their armor base is way lower. Their armor base is way lower, but they do have a little bit of armor with a shield, and then they have the 60% range block chance. Uh, and frankly, they're way less expensive uh, for right now. So let's pull in one unit of that force. And that force will take uh, three turns to fully muster in as well. That's that's good. All right, so we'll do that. And let's go ahead and next turn it. See what happens. So here comes the first enemy. Coming up, see Ya Ting. She did not move that army again, which is great for us. Hopefully she's busy fighting that other war. Uh, Han Empire, I think, is next here. Yeah, Han Empire. They didn't do anything of note. Looters. Okay, looters just keep raiding the town of Wuwei. That's that's fine. Uh, if that's what they want to do, I don't need to worry about them. Um, Alright, sieges and blockades. Yeah, we know. Wuwei. Lookout posts done here in, uh, in Anding. Great. So now we get the garrison. Uh, we don't need to up it to the next one. Um, it doesn't actually add any additional troops. Character developments. Alright, we did get two characters up here. Uh, we don't have the funds to hire them, and honestly, I, we don't need them. It's fine. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and let's take this force and let's attack we Salt Mine. Like as one blade. It can finally go and hit it. Start battle. Let's do it. Watches. All right, into the fight we go. Yeah, we don't have. Uh, we have two units of archers, and they do. Okay, they do have flaming arrows. So if we can just actually assault this salt mine through one. Oh, ooh, it spins really quick up there. Uh, through one stretch where we don't have to worry about overlapping towers, then we can just burn down the towers and assault in. I'm thinking maybe this side. Yeah, because these towers here, if I can just highlight them, it's not really letting me. Yeah, these towers here are pretty alone. Like, the towers elsewhere are too far away to support them. So we'll go ahead and we'll take our whole force and put them over here. Archers, please get on flaming arrows. And, yeah, we'll have... This is the, we'll have the left unit of archers. Go hit them. Right unit of archers. Go hit them. Um, and yeah, hopefully we can just take out the towers, and then the rest of our forces can, uh, you know, enter the city um, without any worry of tower fire. So yeah, we're getting good shit, uh, <laughs> good shots in on them. Uh, they're burning quick. There we go. Hundred, a uh, hundred uh, fire damage. Both of you hit that one. That should do it. Tell him the halt. Seven. Yeah, that. I think it's gonna burn on its own here. Yep, hundred. There we go. All right, that's done. Uh, archers, you can now actually get to a more advantageous position and be on fire at will and just shoot at whoever the heck you want. Uh, the rest of the army, let's go ahead and just move in front of the archers. Archers coming out of the trees, up here to the top of the hill, looking down on the enemy forces. Six, those, some of those, some of these guys do have good range block chance, uh, chances, and they are retreating uh, into the city, but these archer militia do not. So why don't we actually uh, focus here on taking out the archer militia? No, the archer militia, please. And the archer militia, and then my generals. Just go hit. Just get in there and hit. And what do we have? We have a melee attack rate, passive buff. And a splash damage active buff. Nice. And then, yeah, there you go. There's the... Go ahead and hit these guys. Use your splash damage, please. Here he goes. Nice. Alright, let's go. Uh, you guys can just go hit those archers. Knock them out. Alright, my archer units... Oh, wait, where are my archer units? Archer units, just position yourselves here and be on fire at will. And fire at whoever the heck you want. We'll go ahead and we'll just take out their archers with my generals. I'm just trying to lose the least amount of troops possible in this fight. Keep this army fresh. Yeah, I think my archers are going to start really firing in here on that Saber Militia. Uh, which is great. General, just keep on them. General here, there we go, they're all routing. And I guess we can just turn my general this way then, and if, if these guys keep routing and we can get these guys to route who are already shaken, then uh... This battle will be over. They should route any second now. They're wavering. They're wavering. Look, the they're they're routing. They're routing. Oh, these guys came back. Okay. 
go after them. You just stay on that archer unit. Here we go. Those, okay, savers are coming back. So we'll, we'll actually focus on right, that one's gone. That one's done. It's broken. Yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna keep hitting them with our generals in this uh, in this situation. Wow, that's a really really long timer uh, to get the attack back, like the splash damage effect. Very surprised by that. We can go up to speed two here. We'll just let our generals finish them off. There we go. They're all routing victory. Easy. Easy, easy, easy. I think I lost a few guys. Uh, that's really it. So, claim victory and battle. Very straightforward. This is proof of our Yeah, only 26 guys. Oh, really? That's all the money I get? 85? Dang. Um, yeah, we'll occupy the salt mine. Character gains rank. Zhujong. All right. And then how much money does salt mine make? Oh, that's not as much as I thought it would be. Um, I assume this is probably pretty affected by... Why is it plus negative 35%? Is this a... Oh, minus 50% income from all sources, right, which is the, the faction support. So as the faction support grows, um... This will, this will increase, and we'll end up making, like, maybe, you know, it'll actually be a uh, hundred and what, 115 um, coins per month, uh, gold per month from this province. So again, it's not that much, but, you know, it's worth it to get. It's, it's income. Um, and then we got uh, Zhu Zhang here, who's now a level 2 healer, so we can actually add another trait on for him. So let's take a look at what he's got. He has the splash damage effect, and this charisma, which gives public order and retinue, uh, and morale to his retinue. Okay, we have a few directions we can go. We can go to the right, and we can take subtlety, which is night battles, guerrilla deployment, it's, it's fine. Gives a little resolve, which is nice. Um, cunning is not really important for this guy because uh, he doesn't have any ranged units in his retinue. Uh, we go this direction. We get integrity, uh, enlightenment, which uh, I guess they all give enlightenment. Yeah, they all give enlightenment. Uh, satisfaction and corruption in the local commandery decrease. I mean, that's good. Uh, and then what, what about uh, if we go up? If we go up, we get campaign movement, uh, campaign map movement range for the own army and speed for his retinue. Now that one I do like a lot. And that gives resolve, which is health, and instinct, which is damage. Um, boost. We can also take one of these larger ones. Knowledge of the Spirit. Uh, it just gives, uh, it gives a passive buff for a morale um, bonus. That's actually very good. And that gives resolve and instinct as well. And then we have uh, knowledge of the body. Um, which gives an active buff, which is a heal effect. Eh, it's kind of okay. Um, now let's just look at the ones that are elsewhere. Like, right now I'm leaning towards going for Effortless Flow. I think that's the best one. Um, plus 6% income from Commerce Faction while it is really nice. Uh, here we have range. Geez, yeah, see, that's not... And this is income from Industry. I mean, those income ones are nice, which would make me maybe consider these, but... Uh, for the time being, I think it's okay. Uh, income from Peasantry is there. And here we get uh, armor and military supplies. Um, up here we get plus five food production and an administered commandery. Uh, we also have the charge bonus. This is definitely, I think, the best one for the short term. Maybe also knowledge of the spirit. Um, but this, I think the 6% income from commerce is huge uh, if I can get there. Um, but I think for the time being, we're going to take the campaign movement map range. Um, because I do think that's important uh, for this army in particular, because I need them to, to move around and patrol a pretty large area. Um, yeah, so well done by that force. Uh, nice um, nice victory here. And uh, yeah, we they, they did well. Okay, down here. Um, I mean, I can... This army's pretty much back to full health. Um, and I can start moving in on this level 3 settlement over here. Uh, its reserves look pretty bad, which is good. That's a, oh, oh, look at that. The army, uh, they had to severely cut their army. Um, the army had to significantly decrease, so we are going to go ahead and move in on them. Uh, and I can make it there in two turns, but I, what I want to do is I want to make sure I stay inside my territory here. So I just get that little bit of replenishment again for one more turn um, before I move in on them next turn. And... Uh, yeah, sack value is big. Maybe I... No, I'm not going to sack it. I'm going to want to control it. But anyway, regardless of that, um, that, that's very nice. We still get the replenishment here. Uh, that unit is obviously not very full yet, but it'll replenish it. And we get the general's health uh, replenishment, which is great as well. Um, 
Okay, I mean... Yeah, that's a good turn financially. We get three buildings done ne next turn, or two buildings done next turn. We get the small voodoo's upgrade to a small city, and Jin Chang um, gets the... Where's Jin Chang? Jin Chang gets this upgrade, the income from commerce. So you can see commerce income's at 628 right now. We'll take a look at what that is next turn. And let's go to it. All right, let's see what our enemies do. See what you tang. Anything? I didn't see anyone. Didn't see the Han do anything either, and let's see Zhang Lu. Now, looters, they did their normal little looting of the city up there. It's fine. Um, the Great Divide. Officials witness smoke rising from... Oh, no. Uh, and Ding. Sun Shui. Diminished supplies. Minus five reserve capacity. Okay, reserve capacity, not reserves. That's okay. Um, that's fine. That's okay. As long as the reserves aren't completely taken out, uh, that's really... That's, that's fine with me. Um... Okay, buildings. Yep, small city and depot. So what do we get here? Uh, we have now 689 commerce income. Not a huge, not as big of a jump as I was maybe hoping, but a jump nonetheless. And then Wudu, uh, Wudu, we now have the extra building slot, um, and this city is making most of its income from industry. 380 base industry income is great. So that's, and then we also have yeah, we also have the silk uh, sieges and blockades is just the typical stuff. So uh, what is it? What is this little? Army action points available. Yes, I know. Thank you. Uh, Wudu, what do we want to build? Let's take a look. So, industry buildings. We do have the public workshops uh, already built here, which is just a base income from industry. Uh, so, what do the other ones give? Labor housing is the percentage income. That's good. Um, that, that increases the percentage of income from industry, uh, which is very nice. And that, I guess, scales. Um, interesting. It gives population growth at the lowest two levels. Plus 6k, for example. Oh, and then it gives population growth in the local... Okay, so it gives population growth in the local area, but decreases um, population growth in other uh, adjacent commanders. And Artisan um, just gives base commerce and industry income. But see, like, labor housing, right? Labor housing here, 10% income from industry boost. I mean, that's a, that's an additional, you know... Uh, at least you know 38, but it but it scales because you know 25 percent to 35 percent. So uh, boost. Uh, it's just it's a nice bonus. I'm thinking labor housing, and I get the little bit of pala of population growth as well, um, which will also help my income from all sources. Like I don't need any of the peasant stuff. Like for, uh, population growth, income from peasantry, farming. I mean that's nice, but not necessary. Uh, what do we get? Communal in. Public order, income from commerce, satisfaction, faction wide. It's not bad. Oh, is this the one? What's the one that's actually my my mission? Uh, I forgot that there's a mission here. Um, build a scholar's lodge, and it gives me a nice bit of money. So scholar's lodge is the third level uh, of this down here uh, of this building, and this building gives enlightenment. Okay, so. That, maybe it's worth doing that and research rate enlightenment and research rate that's that could be pretty valuable the thing is like is there a better place i can build that you know um like and ding here right maybe i when i delete the, the garrison maybe and ding can build that because their income is just peasantry and it's just very low um i mean they'll have a tool maker they'll have and then they'll have farmland so it'll just be peasantry income Whereas here in Wudu, I'm making so much industrial income that I, I, I want to keep boosting that. You know, I want to keep boosting that income. Um, like maybe something like, like Jin Chen. Like I don't want to, you know, build... I don't want to waste a building slot on... if it make, You know, does that make sense? I don't want to waste a building slot on that building if I don't have to. But it's tempting. It's very tempting. Enlightenment and research rate. Research rate would be huge. I think the question is how... Can I wait a few turns? I think I could probably wait a few turns and then and then build it here in Anding. I think I would. Yeah, I think Anding is going to be where I end up putting that building. Um, so I think we're going to skip that for now. Uh, you know, as much as I would love to get that going, um, but no, that's we're going to skip that for now. Temple. Uh, this is also gives enlightenment, public order, and this can see this gives a little bit of an income boost, income from all sources, uh, which I also have a pretty good amount of silk income here. So maybe that's not a bad one. Public order and enlightenment boost. Um, what's the guerrilla warfare? This is my faction's special building. Uh, faction wide, plus five percent post battle loot income and military supplies and adjacent commanderies. That's a good one too. 
It's a good one too. I'm I think I'm gonna do labor housing. Ten percent income from industry. Let's just keep boosting that industry income. I wanna see what it is. So it's four seventy five right now. We'll see what it raises to uh next turn. And then here in Anding, yeah, this force um we want to get them. We'll, I just want to knock out this army uh, so I can delete that building. So we'll actually move this force south. And uh, they don't really need replenishment. So let's go ahead and let's get them in a force march. And uh, go ahead and get down uh, down here, please. That would be great. Alright. Yeah, they're going to lose some supplies. This army's been having supply problems for a while, but not the end of the world. Um, I would love to get that toolmaker. We'll get it eventually. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna we'll be able to probably go ahead and instigate this battle next turn. Um, and with this army, we can go and we can attack the main city here of Zhang Lu and uh, their only city and knock them off. So let's do it. For China. All right, decisive victory is what it expects. Uh, they don't have any turns until supplies deplete, so I would usually starve them out in this situation. Um, but because it's winter, my army's gonna take really heavy, uh, supply losses, so I'm actually just gonna go ahead and fight the battle. Do not waste time. All right, it let's only do it. Delays your defeat. So yeah, again, um, I want to look for that opening where I don't have to deal with, uh, too many towers. So if I zoom out here, yeah, this side here, definitely that's a lot of towers. But maybe I can uh, assault in this back, uh, this back side this way. You know, these don't really overlap too much if I kind of come in from this direction. So let's go ahead and let's take my force. And, I mean, I might have to assault in through two, di two different directions here. Um, but we'll go ahead and we'll take my archers that can hit with fire. These guys here. And start battle. And yeah, your guys' job, go burn down those towers immediately, please. This side you can fire at the other tower. And yeah, they do have a lot of men. No doubt about that. They only have the one spear unit guarding over here. Maybe I send my generals that way and run my generals in behind and let my army fight one-on-one -on -one this direction. But yeah, first things first, let's just let's burn this tower down. Yeah, because these towers, they, they do a lot of damage. So we need, to, we need to get rid of them. Come on, guys. Yeah, there we go. 44%. Should catch fire any second now. Maybe after this barrage. Fire damage actually went down. That's interesting. Okay, there. My normal archer units are firing as well. So hopefully... There we go. 62, 64. Alright, it's growing on its own now. Fire just on that one, please. Big barrages. 60. Yeah, alright. Those are going to catch fire. Well done, archers. Good job. Let's just make sure we stay out of the range of these towers, which come right this direction. 99, 100, there we go. They should light up. That one should light up as well. Okay, those towers are done. Now let's take my generals. Yeah, I am going to do this. Generals, let's take you this direction. Just, uh, we can loop in through this side and, and take capture some towers for... Our, what, why, why do I have a unit routing? Are you serious right now? Alright, yeah, these horse guys, they, I'd rather, I'd always rather have normal, um, normal archers than them, I think. They, they can just be really frustrating. Really frustrating. Yeah, those towers, nowhere near range of those towers. In range, yeah, so you can, you can move up. Okay, they, they, they did come back in. Okay. So yeah, we can move our archers to here, and maybe just, you know, we'll just take some pot shots in the city. And then the rest of the force, go ahead and move up this way. The other two archer units, yeah, you can position there as well. General, how we doing? Go hit those spearmen. Alright, uh, General fell off the horse. I was hoping they wouldn't fall off the horse. But, not the end of the world. They'll use their special attacks and hopefully this, uh, this, this force here will drop pretty quickly. We shall see. Are they sending? They might be sending another unit of spearmen to come help. Alright, yeah, my archers are getting good shots in here. Which is great. Just keep firing, guys. Everyone else is moving up into position. That's perfect. Okay. How are they doing over here? 
down in, down to 60. I mean, this spear guards unit is not a not a bad unit, you know. I mean, this is a this is a strong unit. But there we go. They're fleeing. They're broken. Let's go ahead and let's capture uh, these towers. Why is it not showing me where I can capture them from? Should be able to take over the tower, right? Because these towers don't fire into the city itself. They only fire out. Yeah, there we go. They just want to sit here and uh, and take rain shots. That is totally fine with me. Let's go ahead and just get a nice big archer line uh, right there. Everyone get in the position. Oh, selected them. I did not mean to select them. You guys... You guys can come over here. Generals, how we doing? Oh yeah, he's on foot. Um, so he's gonna be moving a bit slower. Which is annoying. But it's okay in the end. Go ahead and use your special attack, please. There we go. Yeah, he'll charge in. How are these guys doing up here? They're just trading shots. We'll, we'll let them just keep doing that. As long as no one is in range of this tower, we're I'm good with that. Uh, yeah, generals. This general's now engaged. Gong Du himself. Go ahead and use your special attack as well, Gong Du. Come on, use it. There we go. Nice. Yeah, and these are good units we're taking out too, these spear guard units. I love the citizens running. I think that's just great. I've always loved that effect in this game, with the citizens in the cities. Is this unit broken? They're broken. Okay, go after the archers now, please, general. Uh, alright, you guess you're going that way. Alright! Guess it's time we should start advancing in with our troops, huh? Let's go. And then the archer force, we'll group, let's get them groups together. You know what? Horse archers, just get the heck out of there. I really, really don't need uh, those horse archers. They, they're just, they're annoying to maneuver. They're just kind of a pain. Alright, forces are moving in. Uh, let's get my ranged cavalry. Where are they? Ranged cavalry. Come help out the generals, please. Come this way. Uh, you want... You might want a duel, huh? You want a duel? He doesn't want a duel. No, what about against him? Doesn't want a duel. Okay. That's fine. Kind of lame, if you ask me, but... Alright. Come on, guys. Get them. Do I have to take out the barricade? Maybe I have to take out the barricade. Yeah, we'll take out the barricade. Alright, my cavalry should be coming in this way. There we go. And all the rest of the troops looking. They're, they're starting to come through. Still taking shots in with my uh, with my archers. And yeah, this is just going to be a slog of a fight over here. As my whole infantry force pours, absolutely pours into the city. Yeah, my archers unit... Yeah, struggling a little bit. Get all these guys, go and hit them. Let's engage. Alright, the barricade's down, right? Yeah. Not quite. No. Alright. Just keep on that barricade. Knock it out, please. Alright, you guys are in the city. That's great. So let's line you up here. Maybe we can go hit that swordsman unit. Because swordsmen are not very good against cavalry. Barricade's down. Go hit them. There we go. Finally, we can move through. All right, yeah. Now we got a big fight here in the city. Uh, where's my archers force? Archers force. Jeez, these guys are really struggling to move in around this corner, huh? Everybody, just come in and let's attack. Just keep filtering in archers. Once they're all past the archers, they'll be uh, they'll get better shots in. Cavalry. Go ahead and move up this way. Maybe just charge after those uh, the spearmen, or we can use them against the uh, against the archers. And in general, yeah, you can go ahead and hit the spear guards. Maybe don't worry about the archers as much. And then this is just a big slog, big slog of a fight. That general is not going to last much longer. Well, he's not going to last much longer at all. Keep it up. That's right. Alright, they're starting to route. These guys, okay, my cavalry here did get 
caught by the spears a bit, so let's just pull them out. Uh, we'll let my generals uh, take care of that spear guards unit. Use your uh, use your specials, please. There we go. Nice. Yeah, keep on that spear guards unit. You guys, if the archers want to charge you, I mean, go ahead and yeah, fight the archers. I got no problem with that. All right, here we go. Most of the inf my infantry blob is in here. This general's gonna die. He has no way to escape. He's kind of stuck here. 1.9k health. Everybody go after him. Just try to take him out. Maybe he's gonna escape, actually. No. Yeah, he might escape. He did escape a little bit, which is a bummer, but that's okay. Everyone else is moving into this fight. General, go after them. You guys routed those. Nice. Go ahead and route the archers as well. My generals are gonna come in and hit the saber militia. Yeah, he is running with 150 something health, uh, but that's okay. Archers units. Just get you guys free. Push back up slightly, please. We just need the rest of this infantry to get in and get in the fight itself. Um, yeah, generals, do you have six seconds to have your effect again? All right, there we go. Use your specials again, please, and we'll should be able to should be able to take out that unit. You guys are taking out the archers. Well done. Stand the general. Let's, generals, let's go after that spear guards unit, and then we can charge in the back of this force. Um, yeah, you guys, I mean, this is just a huge slog here, and, like, look out, look at my tail of troops coming in. Um, but I guess the archers can just, you guys can just kind of lob shots in, uh, on them. I guess that's the best way to keep this fight up. Just keep the, keep the shots coming. You guys stay on the spears. Generals, just make sure I want them to break before you I move. Alright, there we go. Alright, we can now get my militia set up. Uh, sorry, my uh, cavalry set up for a uh, charge. Um, I guess generals, just go ahead and charge in. Nothing else really to do with them. They're just going to take them a minute to get there anyway on their uh, running. Uh, yeah, and this is all their troops that are left. So yeah, I think the archers... Yeah, you guys can just pull out. You can stop. We don't really need you anymore. We'll finish this off with the guys we got. Here come my, uh, here come my cavalry. And we are gonna smack yes. into this bulk of their yes. force from behind, Good. and then they should, uh, it should break them. Come on, guys. Get in the position, please. The enemy oh, they're starting to route. Alright, let's just go hit them. Yeah, these guys are, they're tired. That's why they're moving a bit slow. There we go. They're all running. They're all running. Cavalry's coming in. I mean, we could mop up here a bit if we need to, but it's uh, it's not worth the potential casualties. Um, it's a city fight. They're all gonna die anyway. You know, not a not a big deal. Boom! All right. Hopefully, let's get a lot of money from this. Come on, give me like two thousand. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Ah, One thousand. Okay. Not bad. I just don't want to sack and withdraw, or even loot and occupy. I really don't want to. Um, I don't want to lower the settlement level. It's only a level 3 city. I just don't think it's it's worth it to bring it back to level 2, just to have to build it back up again. My heart remains with the people. Faction Regency? No, yeah, the faction is destroyed. Yeah. Alright, Occupation. It's mine now. Commandery secured. Heng Zhong, nice. Character gains rank. Uh, gains... <laughs> gains rank. Zheng Kai. And uh, killed in battle, Zhang Lu. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. We. I'm surprised. I didn't realize he took him out. I thought he escaped, but guess he guess he died. All right, so we can go ahead and upgrade Zhang Kai. He is now level five, which is great. And I think that means I do get five enlightenment from anything I give him here. Or no, it's just two. It's just two base. Okay. Um, we got a good amount of options, so we can do. I like this one. Uh, actually, his retinue is pretty much mostly ranged units and cavalry, so melee damage, uh, not that amazing. Replenishment for own army, though, um, would be really, really nice. I don't know if it stacks. I know we, we already have that. You can see the plus 5% from characters. If that stacks to 10, um, that would be really nice. Uh, defiance, armor, and military supplies in enemy territory, but that's only when he's commanding. Um, this one up top here is... No, that's not that good. Um, we have here, uh, unit morale and public order, okay, um, guerrilla deployment, night battles, not amazing, not amazing. 
Um, just looking at which routes I might want to go. I mean, this is the cavalry route here, right? Uh, mobility, running speed of his own retinue, morale when attacking. It's only when he's commanding. But then here you get the mighty knockback and charge speed. Um, this just is really not that great. You know, it's just not that good at all. Uh, what about this guy? What do we got here? This is income from peasantry, patch faction wide. Because I was thinking maybe I just take this one with the armor and mil um, military supplies. Hmm. I'm kind of split here. I think maybe we maybe we have to take the top one. I, I would like to take one that gives enlightenment though, um, but I, I want to get to intensity or mobility, like having those options. Um, maybe we take this one for right now and see if that replenishment stacks, because uh, that would be really nice if it does. So let's go. Let's go ahead and do that, and that gives resolve and cunning, which is which is good, as well as the enlightenment. So let's see now. Is that 10% from characters? It is. It does stack. Okay, that's huge. That's a big, that's a big boost. Um, another, and an additional 5% replenishment. That's very, very nice. Uh, Alright, so we have now secured this commandery here uh, of Han Zong. And this puts us, again, we're at border with the Han Empire over here, but that's fine. I mean, we always knew we'll be at war with them for a while, right? This force here is moving south. Um, I do have some finances I can kind of throw around now. Um, but nothing to, nothing to really build, like, uh, I guess I could, oh, I guess I could build an Anding, actually, what, what was I talking about? Of course I could build something, I can build here. Um, I could upgrade this, which is population growth and income from peasantry, uh, percentage increase, um, because I'm gaining income from peasantry here in the livestock corral and here in the communal irrigated farms. Um, I could upgrade the livestock corral, which gives an additional food and 20 income, you know, it's not great. Uh, it's, you know, it's not a huge boost. I mean, one additional food is, is never a bad thing. Um, but this one, you know, another 4k population, 25% bonus to food production, and another 5% income from peasantry. I think we'll go ahead and we'll take that. So we'll do peasant family houses. Um, before I use spend more money, do I want either of these generals? Probably not really. I, I don't really think I need more generals right now. I, I don't think I'm at a, in a shortage for them currently, so... I'll use the money elsewhere. So Anding is building. Wudu is building. Um, Jin Cheng is the only and and Shu Fan. Shu Fan. Where's Shu Fan? Oh, that's <laughs> that's the salt light. That's the one I took. Okay. What about Jin Cheng? Why am I not building anything in Jin Cheng currently? Is it because I don't have the money, or is it because I can't upgrade anything because of research restrictions? Um, Looks like most of it is research restrictions. Um, I could do the next level of Silk Road Market, um, but I don't have the money. And what's this? This is giving me, like I said, I can convert it to a fish trader, which gives less income from, from commerce, but a little bit more food. No, that's okay. I will leave it how it is. Uh, so yeah, we'll save our money uh, for the time being here. And this this unit is now looking, this, this army is looking great, and we have our other army coming in to relieve and ding, and then I can, you know, delete this building and build up something new there in two turns. So, next turn, here we come. Alright, she didn't move her army, but uh, definitely hired in more units. Um, it's going to be quite a full stack there. Oh, the looters actually occupied the settlement now. Okay, that's interesting. Um, that's fine, the settlement was literally making me zero money. Um... So we'll, I'll have to see what happens there. Okay, what's this? Yan, Yuan Shu declares his intentions. Messages has, have reached you. The warlord Yuan Shu has declared himself the emperor under heaven. Such a brazen act has angered many, but has also drawn, drawn powerful nobles to his cause. So the Han Empire and Yan Shu are now at war. Okay, young emperor comes of age. Um, okay. All right, a lot of notifications this turn. Yeah, so Han Empire, again, I mean, they're at war with, like, everybody, right? Uh, literally everybody, 20 factions. That's why I don't consider them much of a threat here on my border, because they are all over the place uh, fighting everyone. Um, so we can get out of diplomacy mode. Uh, we saw settlement loss. That's okay. Intentions. Emperor comes of age. Assignments. He Yi is getting withdrawn from Wudu. Um, what was his... What was his... Uh, 
assignments here in Wudu. It was the income from commerce, silk, and spice boost. And I do have that income from silk. So I'm losing that bonus to the income there. Um, I could send them back. But I also remember, I want I do want to raise a new army. And I think he uh, is a great general to lead that force. So might uh, might use that. Ancillary's game. We got a merchant. Hunting and trade influence. And I don't have any trade right now because I, I am literally unable to until I get too empowered. Uh, as you can see at the bottom of that tooltip, it says unlocks the diplomatic option to make trade agreements with regular factions. Uh, I need to get all the way to empowered first, so that doesn't affect me for the time being. Buildings, barracks for the poor in Wudu. Right, increase the industry income now to 513. And Silk Road Trading Post is complete here, um, which we are now making a lot of money here because not only do I have the Silk Road Trading Post making me money, but I also have these other uh, buildings too. Industry. Okay, this is. I might change those buildings. Uh, I just feel like this is very spread all over the place, buildings wise. Um, new cat looters have a capital, right? Okay, uh, because this is this is you know a commer or silk um, building. And why do we need we need peasants and then we need industry income? I mean, I could make this you know. Uh, this is this is silk over here. You know, I could have a communal inn, give me commerce income, schools. Um, uh, you know, there's good, uh, you know, there's good uh, buildings I could make here. Um, yeah, I mean, there's. I, I feel like maybe communal workshops I will leave because two base two hundred income is is actually pretty nice. Um, but I, I could do a blacksmith here, which gives income from industry as well as a bonus to income from industry and replenishment instead of the food and peasantry income. Um, that might be a nice building, uh, a nice building to build. Um, that might be a really nice building to build, actually. I, I might do that and take out this communal irrigated farm. Uh, I mean, it's a nice, it's a nice level three farm. Don't get me wrong, that's good. I just don't see the need for the food production there. You know, eventually, this is, it's just, it's not a food producing province you know what i mean i feel like they built that because this was their only province and they needed food like you know eventually i'll take i'll have the farmlands there uh, this is another farmland um you know there's there's other you know there's other opportunities here for food and i just don't think i need it in Han, on hanzong, hanzong um so what i will do is yeah i'll demolish uh, i'll demolish that building and it actually give me a 600 uh gold refund um, which is nice so we'll demolish that and we'll build We'll just stack, I mean, we can stack industry income here. Industry income with the modifier, and that'll make it a nice industrial money-making city. Um, this army is scaring me. <laughs> so let's go ahead and let's move back to here, please. Uh, and we'll just keep my army, and maybe we'll move south and see if we can't knock her out. So if I go into diplomatic map mode and look at her. Now, she's got a lot of provinces. She's got, she's not a small force. Okay. Um... We'll, think, we'll figure out what to do with that, with, with her. Uh, in the meantime, this force here, ooh, yeah, they they are bad. Um, but we can go ahead and uh, attack them, but we need to be in normal stance for it. And in normal stance, we can't attack them. So we'll just move into the settlement of Anding itself. That'll give us a nice big boost to military supplies back. Uh, and then we can take them out next Trust turn. They're taking a while to muster. True. Um... And then here in ending, yeah, we can actually go ahead and just demolish this now. Uh, it was good for the short term. I still stand by my decision to build it, but ultimately it was not needed. Maybe they didn't attack me because that building was there. I don't know the answer to that. Point is, we'll never know. But we're going to go ahead and demolish this now so that next turn when we beat the army and this building's done, we can start the new building here, which I believe I will make uh, towards the Scholar's Lodge so I can get the Enlightenment and Research Rate. We'll keep that, uh, keep that climbing. Um, okay. We have some money to spend, uh, and we do have a uh, building uh, available, a ba building slot available here in Wudu. You know, again, main industrial city. We could up this to a base 200 income from industry, or we could up this for population growth and a uh, slight modifier. I think the option's clear. We give another 100 income from industry. Actually, it'll be another 135 income from industry. That's, that's an easy choice, if you ask me. And uh, that's it. We can't, uh, we can't build anything anywhere else. Um, currently, so why don't we maybe just go on to the next turn? Um, and then we can use our funds to maybe raise a third force with Hee Yee. 
and that that might that, I think that's a that's a good thought. So let's go ahead and let's see what she does with that army in the south. Nope, still no movement into my territory. It is just there. Maybe she's just guarding against me while I'm guarding against her, and it's just kind of a standoff. Uh, regardless of the reason, um, she hasn't uh, attacked, uh, come towards me, and that's okay. Faction development, spreading of wisdom. Ah, so we finished the uh, finished the research. Oh, nice. Spreading of wisdom is done. Um, we unlocked all those buildings, uh, which are, you know, yeah, Spice Route Market, Scholars Library, so the next lineup of that chain of buildings, Silk Road Market, Academy Complex, and some manufacturing stuff, uh, which is great. Um, and we get the 15 Enlightenment, so now we're getting way closer to Healed. We just need another 19 Enlightenment to get there. And Ancillaries gain. Ooh, this one has some nice modifiers. Campaign movement map range when commanding and speed to its own retinue. Uh, that is pretty nice, as well as authority coming and increased provisions. And then buildings. Uh, construction complete, demolition complete. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we did that. So, communal workshops in Wudu. Wudu! 648 industry income now. That's really, really nice. And uh, peasants' family houses in Amding, um, which gave, yeah, the food production and uh, income from peasantry. Nice. Okay. And then, yeah, we'll, we'll finally rid Amding of this rebellion. No Let's go attack. Will achieve this. Go attack. There you go. Start battle. Man, I am glad I edit these things out for you guys, because that loading screen, it was like at least a minute long. Oh, that was crazy. Um, anyway, yeah, it's just a fort. Um, this fire will spread once we catch the wall uh, on fire, so we'll do our usual method here with our archers. And um, immediately off the start of the battle here, please go and hit that building. And please go and hit that building. Thank you very, very much. As for the rest of the forces, um, we'll just go ahead and stay right outside of the range of the towers for the moment. Ready yourselves. At any second now, the archers will unleash on the towers and completely burn down the walls uh, of the settlements. Any second. There we go. There they go. I love, I love how the fire arrows look in this game. It's such a nice design. Uh, and you can see now already the building is on fire. Both buildings are on fire, and that fire will spread, um, will spread through the walls. And they actually don't have any ranged units, so yeah, we can position our archers here on the top of this hill and just uh, go ahead and let them, uh, let them unload. Oh, though they have this crossbow unit. Go hit the crossbowmen. Go take them out. Rest of the army, start advancing. So yeah, this fire will spread to these towers eventually over here. Uh, why don't you tell my army to walk? Just advance slowly. See, these towers have super short range, um, so they're not—they're not really a threat. And this unit here, yeah, they're not gonna—they—they're not gonna uh, be able to last too long, I wouldn't think. Do they have range block chance? No, they don't have any range block chance. I'm surprised I'm not taking out more of them. Maybe they're kind of using these tents uh, as a defense a little bit, which is a smart move, if you ask me. Uh, go ahead, archers, just sit here on fire at will, and literally fire at whoever you want, and the rest of my army is advancing in. Alright, rest of my army. You guys can run now. Let's get up there. There we go. You seriously think you have a chance? Oh, I'm sorry! Did you say yeah, just go ahead and uh, start fighting the generals, I guess. Uh, I'm not really sure what these guys' stats are, but he's got a good weapon. Anyone want to duel? He, both of them want to duel. Go ahead and duel. He's got a pretty good weapon, too. How is, his, how is this guy's weapon? Terrible weapon. Oh, he does have tenacity of steel. Yeah, we're not going to duel him, then. But go ahead and stay on him. My army is now... Yeah, just go hit them. Army, let's just... Just charge in. Just go do your thing, guys. Oh, yeah, this duel. This duel is going to go quick. 
Oh man, I wiped him out super quick. Alright, you yeah, go and uh stay on there, General. Stay on there, General, please. You guys turn and, and fight the general as well. Uh, you don't really know what you want to do, huh? Your form needs improvement. All, right, all you guys turn on the general, please. You can go after those units, I guess. Why not? You guys, yeah, you're chasing them down. All you guys attack them. Yeah, we want to just take that general out. That's the main goal. This general on the horse, yeah, I guess stay on the, on the spearmen there. Go take them out. Other than this general, this army is about to, uh, about to just completely melt. So, we took out that rebellion pretty easy. Does he have a splash damage effect? Yeah, we can use the splash damage on their general. Yeah, there we go. Nice big blow. And there he is. He's routing. That didn't take too long. You guys, all the infantry, don't get into the range of the towers. Just stay in the city once the units route. Yeah, you can see, because it burned down this whole side, but these towers are still active and still firing. We're just going to chase down the general with my one general that's on a horse here. Uh, I know it's victory, and I know we can end it there. Um, but this general, stay on uh, them, please. Oh, both my generals are on a horse. All right, yeah, he should be able to chase him down, I think. So we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and let that happen. This can, oh, there we go, we got him. Sweet. All right, let's just make sure this army doesn't come back. Uh, we can we can speed up for this, but yeah, just general, just stay on heavy spear guards, definitely go after them. And we'll just use my generals to do a little bit of a mopping up here. What do we got over here? That's a G militia, crossbow... Axe bands, way over there. Fifteen axe bands, not that much. Yeah, they're they're mopping up these better units uh, in no time. That's just, that's just a G, but the uh, the the spear guard, or, you know, whatever it was over here, heavy spear guards. Yeah, that's a good unit. That's one we want to make sure we take out. All right, they're done. Why don't you just go after the seventeen crossbows, or actually go after the forty-three G? Can I get to them before they reach the end of the edge of the map? Maybe. I'm not one hundred percent sure. Spear guard unit is almost done. He can just get an angle on him and take him out. Two left. Two left of those. Why don't you go after the crossbow? And we're not going to get to those guys in time. Alright. This is pretty much done. Sorry guys, just one second here. Just going to finish mopping up as many of these fools as we can. I don't know if rebellions just, uh, you know, dissipate after a defeated battle or if they, uh, if they stay on the field, but I just don't want to have to fight the army again. Alright. That's fine enough. Claim victory, end battle. Alright, good. Army's done. They're not, uh... Oh, they're... They are coming back. 81 men are coming back, really. Uh, 1385 money. That's great. Wu Meng. Um, he'd rather die. You know, I'll take the 200 and I'm sure. And then, we, this army, we didn't really take any losses. We only lost 71 men, so we'll just take... Ooh, or plus 8 to military supplies. This army needs military supplies, but no. We'll take the money. Let them go and repent. Battlefield Surgeon. Uh, oh, additional experience for Zhu He. Nice. Remain can I just kind of continue? I mean, I can just continue on these guys and just take them out again, huh? We strike as one yeah, that's kind of... It's kind of unfair, if you ask me. Like, they should be able to... I mean, I, you know, I know what happens to me, too, if I lose a battle. Um, like, in my Kong Rong campaign. But no, if they... If they, uh, if they retreat from a battle, like, I feel like it should... They should at least have one turn before you're able to attack them again. And we can just go ahead and start the battle here and um, just take my generals and just go knock them out. Yeah, I knew I should have mopped up the troops a little bit more there. Where? Where? Oh. Where did this Lance Cavalry come from? Did they have that in the last fight and I just didn't notice? Maybe. Steal yourselves! I mean, maybe they did. I don't know. That's right. We'll just wipe these guys out really nice and quick. Yeah, General took a little bit more of a hit than I would have liked, but not the end of the world. 
Use your special. Come on, use your special. There we go. The enemy run. Nice. Victory. Alright. Stay on him. Take out all the G. Take out all those guys. Two Axeman there we can go out to after. That's Lance. Take out the rest of the Lance Cav. See, this, the detail in this game is great. Like, the horses where the riders are dead. The fleeing with the riders dead. It's such a, such a well-made game. Alright, we're just going to go ahead and mop these guys up. Come on, take out the rest of that Lance. Take out the rest of that G. Yeah, it should be nice and easy. They're, they're almost done. There's only two left, it looks like. Come on. Oh, did he lose his horse? Right, go after them. Is he on foot? Oh, he lost his horse. Is he gonna catch that last G? Look at this, it's the race. This guy's running for his life. Poor guy, running for his life with this. General behind him. Alright, this guy took out those axes. Alright. Well, I don't think I'm gonna catch him. He escaped. Good for him. He deserves a little. He can be the one guy in their army that, uh, that makes it out of this one. Yeah, one man remaining. One guy remaining. Good for them. <laughs> it's too funny. Too, too funny. Imagine that. Imagine being one to one survivor of a battle. Like, everybody in your army perishes, except for you. Oh, that's gotta, that's gotta be crazy. And then this should be the end of this force once Our and for just all. Deeds there we go. Blessed. And we get an additional 85 gold. Actually, an additional 85 plus another 195. So nice. Uh, that's, I mean, that's another, uh, you know, 280 right there. Love that. And rivals, Lu Meng and Zhu He are now rivals. All right. So this force uh, can finally come south and help me out here. Um, my question is, do I send them south or do I send, do I leave this force as like a, a looter's patrol force? It's the, neither one of these guys are legendary characters. They're not super important. Uh, we can, I guess we can give him one of these. Um, maybe we'll give him, the, I guess, cunning and you know, authority one? Yeah, I might as well. Campaign map, movement range, speed. And he has some archers, so adding some cunning is, is a good thing. Um, I don't know if I fully... If I'm going to raise another force, I don't think I need them really in the south. So actually, and it pains me to do this, but uh, Marching. why don't you get up to the river crossing again? We must Go back to where you came from, and uh, these guys will be our looters patrol force in the north, uh, fighting off looters that appear, and that's how we will use them. And then finally here on this turn, we do need to pick the next reform. Uh, we unlock this next range of reforms after we finish this one, so I need to decide what I want to do here. Um, I'm tempted to do one of the, you know, specific uh, to a character type ones. But I'm thinking maybe doing something that unlocks like another string of buildings could be smart. Like... Under communal tavern, peasant community, communities, um, laborer communities, dock warehouse, merchant warehouse. Don't know how much I use those. What about this one? Different ports, fishing port, trading port, coastal freight, trading village. That could be nice. And tea. I don't think I have anywhere that has tea currently. So not sure how, uh, how much those will help me. Um, communal granary. This is like the peasant stuff, huh? A garrison. Uh, communal farming estates, leader's house, uh, it's not really worth it, I don't think. We get bamboo, timber storehouses, grain okay, tri yeah. I know I have some horse pastures, so maybe tribal her horse herders. What do we have up here, finally? This is all the mines. Okay. I'm thinking maybe this one with the types of ports. We'll do the ones with the extra with the extra ports because I think ports can be really, really, really valuable. Um, so worth doing. And then, okay, Hanjong. Um, we have the open slot. Two hundred income from industry. Uh, we could obviously you know upgrade this and get a third slot, uh, but I don't want to do that right now with only two food. So yeah, we'll build this building here. Um, actually, before we do that, let's build in Anding first. Uh, here in Anding. Yeah, I, I was talking about this. It's not a very profitable settlement. Um, I think this is this is a good opportunity to go ahead and get the House of Scrolls. Um, enlightenment and research rate. And just start boosting that up. So we'll go ahead and con uh, construct that. 
uh, it would be really nice to get the, the researches of the reforms going quicker as well as, you know, building the Enlightenment to help level up my faction. And then here, we can, I was thinking maybe we build like a, um, not a headquarters, not a temple, maybe the guerrilla warfare, since it's sort of on the border, it'd be good for military supplies, but that post-battle loot income could be really, really nice just to get and get in somewhere. It's only a little two-province area. We get silk income and industry income. It's making a lot of money for a two-province spot. Uh, you know, we could do, like, labor housing and bump the income or industry, um, but I don't know if that's fully worth it. Uh, we could do an inn and add commerce income. Um, don't think I need garrison. Don't think I need forges. I say that now, but actually forges is pretty nice. Uh, it gives a huge... Yeah, this is what I was thinking of building here, right? The huge amount of punishment, the huge amount of income from industry, uh, the, uh, the big amount of income from industry, and the industry income bonus. I'm just making this like an industrial center, and I might... I might build that once I upgrade the town, but I'm, I'm tempted, I'm really tempted to build this and just up my uh, loot income uh, that I get and, and just go up this train, uh, this train of building this. Let's, let's, because we want, I want to build this somewhere, and I think building it in a little two-province slot uh, is a good spot to put it. Uh, we can also build in Wudu. Wudu is due for an upgrade. Um, we have the blacksmith here, that's, uh, yeah, so we already have that. We could upgrade this to the next level. Uh, Wudu is, again, it's a big industrial center. Uh, so that could make sense. Um, we could also up, we could also spend a thousand and up our in industry income by another 135 a turn. Um, and that, so that will pay off in less than 10 turns if we do that. Uh, we could also upgrade the silk income because I just finished that research. And that will provide another 50 silk income as well as another 10% income from silk. I'm kind of tempted to do the blacksmith. Uh, I mean, the replenishment, 20% replenishment's crazy, but, like, not wholly necessary for such an interior area, but it, that, it doubles the, uh, industry to, uh, income from 60 to, uh, sorry, from 80 to 160, as well as adds another 10%, uh, modifier to it, so that would be really good, um, for the income here, uh, and then when I build, so if I build these two buildings next, you know, I up it, up industry income by about, a, by 180, uh, as well as another 10%, and I think I'll go ahead and start with the uh, with the foundry in this case. Um, so that's really nice. And then finally, maybe we start mustering up this new force uh, in a settlement. This settlement in uh, sorry, in a settlement where we have that extra um, replenishment boost. So maybe here in Wudu, we can go ahead and raise our army. And I don't have enough money for it. <laughs> All right, well, maybe eh, not, not now, but he will be up next. And then we can also go ahead, and I know we have an assignment available. So maybe we do Bay by Shao um, as our, instead of he on an assignment. And what assignments does Bay by Shao? It's the same ones as he used, so we should absolutely use her instead. I don't know why I didn't do that in the first place. And we have three options here. We have Attract Talent. Starting, ooh, starting rank for all recruits. That's tempting. Like, if I sent her to Wudu with that assignment, and then I raised the army there next turn, or, like, over the next couple turns, raised an army there, all of a sudden, all of those guys start with plus two starting rank. So they start instead of rank one, they start rank three. That could be really big. Uh, employee volunteers, food from farming, income from peasantry. And the income from commerce, silk, and spice. Now, let's let's do that. I think this is a plus two starting rank for all recruits in the local commandery. We will send that assignment out to Wudu. And what do we have in Wudu right now? We have the public order assignment going on in Wudu. But Wudu is public order is actually great. So why don't we recall that assignment? We don't need that anymore. And then next turn we can use um, we can use Huang Xiao and uh, send him on an assignment somewhere else. So I think that might be all I have this turn. Yeah, I don't see any other, you know, build a building, upgrade arrows. Uh, that army's moving. This army is in a, you know, I could Let's get them into the city. Home the I mean, this army's full and ready to go. I could go and attack the settlement, but a level four settlement. Uh, ooh, two of the buildings are damaged. The station's garrison is damaged. I don't know. Does that mean that the garrison doesn't, is not able to join the fight? Not 100% sure. Um, I might explore that next time. I think, you know, we've been going for like an hour and ten minutes now. I think this is a perfect place to stop 
and we will get into that uh, possibility next episode. So thank you everyone for watching. As always, you know, if you enjoyed the video and you made it this far, drop a like. I would really appreciate that. Subscribe to my channel. Uh, really helps us, you know, keep going and growing. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. As always, I look forward to seeing everybody in the next episode. Have a good one.